In this video we're going to talk about the cash collections budget. Now some textbooks you're going to see the cash collections budget is broken out by itself. In other books you're going to see it part of your cash budget. But this is something that I want to take some time with because students tend to have a lot of trouble with this. I think most of us live in a cash in cash out um, mentality and so we don't really think about where money is coming from or when we worked for that money. So when you're dealing with companies that are selling on credit, which if you look at our problem it says all sales are made on account, right? So that means accounts receivable. All right, so all of our sales are made basically by billing a customer. Our customers are not paying us when the sale happens. So that means that there's going to be a delay in when we get paid. So that means that even though our sales for January are $210,000, that doesn't mean we're going to collect $210,000 in January. Because typically we're going to collect some of January sales in January, some in February. Um, who knows, it may even extend out to March or further. Some of it we might not even collect at all. But this company, they collect 60% of their sales in the month of the sale and 40% in the following month. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that of January sales, I'm going to collect 60% in January and I'm going to collect 40% in February. Okay, so 60% of January is going to come in in January, 40% is going to come in in February. And that's going to roll forward every month. So in February, we'll collect 60% of February sales in February, and the other 40% that's left over will be collected in March. Okay, so the way that I broke this down is I've got, um, I've got two different rows. One is for the current month, okay, so we're collecting 60% of the current month sales. And then we're going to collect 40% from the month before, from the prior month. Okay, so let's go through and start looking at the numbers, and hopefully this is going to make some more sense. So in January, we're going to collect 60% of the current month, so 60% of January. So if I take 210,000 and I multiply it by 60%, okay, so I'm going to take, we'll write this down for a couple of them. 210,000 times 0 0.60, okay, and that equals 126,000, okay. So 126,000 from January is going to be collected in January. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for February. So 385,000, and I think sometimes it's easier just to work across and work with the same percentages, times 60% is equal to 231,000. Okay, so 231,000. And then for March, we're going to do the same thing. So March is going to be 175,000 times 0 0.60 is equal to 105. Okay, so the total collected is going to be 462. Okay, now this is just part of it because all we did here is the 60% that's collected in the month of the sale. We have to do the 40% from the prior month. Okay, so January's prior month would be December. Well, where are we going to find December? So it doesn't say anything about December in here. Okay, so let's see. Let's look in the problem. All right, so if I look at my problem, I've got, okay, sales budget, production budget, direct materials budget. Um. I've got a balance sheet uh, for the quarter ended December 31st. And notice that, remember, we said that we're dealing with accounts receivable here. 
well my accounts receivable is sixty thousand dollars and that's December's accounts receivable so if you think about our payment schedule okay so let's put AR let's write this in here so my AR for December is sixty thousand dollars Now, if you think about our schedule, right, so in December, we would have collected 60% and we would have written that in our cash collections budget for December. The other 40% to be collected in January was put into accounts receivable. So this $60,000 that's in accounts receivable represents the 40% that's left over that was going to be collected in January. So you don't have to do anything with this number. Okay. So I don't have to multiply this by 40% because this is the 40%. Okay. So I'm going to put this entire amount from December into my cash collections. Okay. So just to be clear, whatever's left over in accounts receivable okay if you're on a two-month collection cycle like we are all of this amount is gonna go into your cash collections okay because that's the remaining amount that needs to be collected for December alright so now let's go through and let's look at the rest of our calculations so February's previous month is January so I'm going to take 210,000 times 0 0.40 and that is equal to 84,000. So I'll write that in here, 84,000. So March's prior month would be February. So I'm going to take 385,000 multiply it by 0 0.40 and that's equal to 154,000 okay so that's what's going to go over here for the prior month okay so my total is 298,000 now you might be thinking well what about the 40 percent of March because that didn't go anywhere Okay, so 175,000 times 40% is 70,000. Where does that go? What are we going to do with that? Okay, well remember that what was left from December, right, was in accounts receivable? Well, when you do your balance sheet for this budget, this $70,000 from March is going to go into accounts receivable on your balance sheet. Okay, so that's where that's going to go. So keep that 70000 in mind because we're going to need that when we do the balance sheet. That's all there is to it. So just make sure that you take your time. Make sure that you understand. Let me do totals while I'm wrapping this up. Make sure that you understand where your numbers are coming from, where you need to put them. Okay, so again, if you look at February, right, this the 231,000 is 60% of February sales and then the 84,000 is 40% of January sales because January is the prior month okay and that's why I like kind of going through and doing the current month first right because then I can say okay 60% of January 60% of February 60% of March and then when I think prior months I'm like okay so this is December for February it's January, for March it's February, so I'm kind of going in a line. So for me that makes much more sense. Um, I've also done it in the past where I've actually written down the months on the side. So you know I'll put, instead of putting current month, prior month, I'll put January, February, March. Um, and then so I know okay in January I'm collecting 60 percent from January and then I'm going to collect from December and February I'm collecting from January and February so that's another way you could do it 
But I kind of like this, especially when you only have two months you have to worry about. Right, it's kind of easy just to lay it out this way. If you don't understand where any of the numbers came from, please, please, please leave me a comment and I can help walk you through. Um, if you like this video and you found it helpful, leave a comment as well because that always helps me out. Um, make sure you like the video if you thought it was helpful. Um, share it out with your friends because I know this is a concept that a lot of people have trouble with and I'd love to be able to help them out. So thanks so much. I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.